Hello. I am finally going to talk about Stephanie. I mean, I've actually talked about Stephanie a lot. I've told her, st I've told her story a lot. Um, but I've never uh, walked through, step by step, through uh, how she got painted, how she came to be. So Stephanie was about 45 when I met her. And, uh, it, and her life had just radically changed for the better. Uh, in terms of elephant happiness, I uh, presume she was now the happiest she'd been in years. And the most enriched just because she had a brand new family again. And she was now the uh, matriarch of a family of seven, uh, including her. So that was a radical life change. And she had a huge new green place to live, too. In this photo, she is, I'm in the elephant barn in the early morning, which is this humongous, think gymnasium kind of space with, you know, various big huge area in the middle and then a lot of places, you know, where single elephants could be enclosed if need be off to the side. And she's on the far side of it and she's in the standing in the doorway. Actually, she would not even be able to come into the common area where I was, but she was way over there standing and, and maybe even swaying a little in the light. But the light was on her butt and her head was was in looking into the darkness, the relative darkness of the uh, the elephant barn barn, and I was a long way away from her on the other side, shooting her with a telephoto lens. So the light in her for this painting is totally coming from behind her. She is being lit way back here in her rump, and it's spilling on her ears, and it's it's uh, it's streaming down her face just a little. So what I do, if you've watched these before, you see that I make a little um, composite thing from all my step-by-step -step photos that I've taken as she was being painted. They're just meant to be approximations. So um, in one, that is the, uh, the transfer drawing with which I start. So number two is now I'm going in with my oil and I'm going over and marking the lines again, making them more permanent. Also in the second one, you can see where I'm beginning to do the background. I mean, pretty much right off the, the bat it goes in. So I'm working with burnt sienna perhaps in her background. I've chosen to go with a, a red for sure uh, and not a particularly hot red. In number three, you can see where I've now added some dark on the trunk on the left hand side. It's this area over here. And in fact, in laying that down, I'm also laying down texture. Now, right now within this, from my angle, I can see some texture in here. I can see a little bit of texture here, but now I don't see any texture going out here. And that's because as an artist, any place I leave visible texture, that texture has the ability to catch the light and call attention to itself. So I really, uh, I want to make sure that most of my texture is laying in those places where I want to call attention. For the next four or five paintings, every time I'm doing something, I am also darkening the background. So that is also what you can see in the fourth one of the top row. Now to the second row, um, I'm adding texture to the trunk. So that gray, uh, that light gray on the trunk, there is texture within all of that. Um, and in her forehead, I have actually pressed in texture. You can, you can see it here from up close. I'll hopefully show you a photo. But I used, I, there's a pressed in texture from something I used in this area that uh, was laid in that initial stage and still shows through at the very end. Um, and the other texture that goes in up here follows these lines. But this one is just the the multiple layers on her forehead. Oh, also, it wasn't just the gray on the trunk, that uh, ochre color that's in her ear that's added in this uh, fifth step, that also has some texture in it. And just even how it's put down, because I'm putting it down with a palette knife. In number seven, I've introduced a color wash. So I've given some kind of a reddish wash over the whole of her. Again, still darkening the background. In number eight, I'm adding both shadow and line. You can see how it is now a lot more shadow into the, 
her, the right side of her face, our left side as we're looking at it. This part up here, there's all sorts of shadow that gets laid into here. More than many of my paintings, Stephanie really changes depending upon how much light she is in. Because there are all, there are details here in the shadow. You can in fact see the folds of her ear and the edge of her ear and you can see the edge of the trunk and you can see some of the lines going way into here. But they are really in the deep shadow. And this painting can be overlit, which I don't really want. Um, I love that how she comes out and goes away depending on the light. Um, but she was stepping into the shadow when she posed for her portrait. So in the third row now, now I'm also starting to deal with highlight. I'm using the palette knife in there, I'm smearing on her ear, I'm smearing on her forehead with a lighter tan color. I'm smearing partially over what I already did before because I'm getting this, I want this variegation of these textures in here. 10, I'm also re-emphasizing lines. So I'm especially doing this line um, here that separates her ear from her body. And I am uh, was bringing out her eye really for the first time also in 10. A lot of focus on the eye. And then some of the texture that goes above her eye. In 11, I have brought in a shadow that's cast by her ear onto her leg. In 12, I'm bringing in more taupey colors. I'm, I'm pushing a little bit more towards blue, I think. You can see the highlights better in the lower ear than you could in the previous one because of this taupey wash. I'm likely putting it on and rubbing it off. I'm also beginning to highlight again to accent some of the texture on the trunk, right in this area here. Again, as usual, I highlight the texture and then I put it in shadow and then I bring it back. I do these subsequent layers, which in, in the end actually build up the texture also. But, but if each layering of color is incomplete, then some vestiges of the previous color come through and it, it, I like it. I think it's much more naturalistic too. Mother Nature does not make a solid color. Moving on to the fourth row, which you can see where I am now working too to, to, uh, on the texture, all of it around the eye and on the side of the, of the trunk. And again, I forgot to mention it earlier this time, but I've spoken about it so much with Stephanie. Stephanie actually has a tusk inside here. And uh, both of them, tusk, Stephanie's a fully tusked elephant, but for reasons known to her, she has been grinding them down to nothing for decades versus an elephant who is naturally tuskless, there is a fullness to her trunk here, which wouldn't be there if there was no tusk inside. Now, uh, it, the grinding it down may or may not be related to her teeth. I don't know, she's on her last set of molars. And every night, Stephanie goes up to the, to the bars and opens up her big mouth and lets her keepers reach inside and ha clean out all the impacted grass in her molars, basically brush her teeth for her every single night just to keep her being able to, uh, to eat and chew her food. So we're on to the fourth one. Each time I paint an elephant, it seems that there's another anatomical lesson for me to learn. And I think this might be something I learned on Stephanie. So this was just this strange little shadow pretty much when I was looking at the picture. I didn't pay much attention, but as I was trying to wrestle you know, to finish her up, I had to deal with this. And I'm realizing that this is on an African elephant. There's this massive, this is a heavy thing, these big ears. And Stephanie is actually known for having huge ears. She really does. Um, and this is the muscle. This is how those ears are manipulated, right up here through this muscle going through here. So I really felt a need to like, to uh, feel the dimensionality and the power of that muscle connected. So a lot of my, I mean, I had to go in and literally look at a lot more pictures of Stephanie and what is this and learn. So, you know, every time I, there's always something else about what is that with the elephant? Then I have to go and do my research and bit by bit, I keep learning more about them. So also we see she has this lovely tear in her ear. I mean, this is, this is not at all uncommon for an older elephant or even a young elephant to have tears in their ears. In fact, it's a way that, that with herds in Africa, even that they're known for the holes in their ears or the tears in their ears. 
But so skip to the last row now. And again, it's detail, except what I, perhaps the most pronounced thing that I am doing is I am really heavily laying on the highlights, including even going for a real white right up here at the top of her forehead, but much brighter through here. I'm going to show you close-ups of, of this part of the ear. And then also uh, a few steps back, oh, in this last row, I actually, even though I had plunged this into shadow before, and remember I showed you that shadow strip that's now not there anymore, but I, I needed to see the texture of her leg again. And so this whole highlight that came in her flank here came in that, in that very last row of paintings. Uh, and then the last one is the picture of Stephanie that's taken by my next door neighbor with a much, you know, with a fancier camera than my cell phone and uh, with really good lighting. She's a joy, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Bye.